All right, so we're working on this video, and we're not quite done with it, but what I want you to do is I've got a, a sound file for you. We also want to add music to our video. So if you could return to the network folder, I added this during the break. If you want to minimize everything, go back to the network folder, and inside of the folder of our project, so inside of Campus Social 2, I just put in this sound file. Weekend in the City. Drag that from my network folder to your video example folder. So put my sound into your video, and we'll get to it a little bit later. And I just want you to get the sound, and I'll talk about sound a little bit more in depth in a moment, because that's a big issue as well. So uh, make sure you got that Weekend in the City.mp3 from my network folder. Drag it into your video example folder. And we'll get back to it. Um, we've got a little bit more that I'm looking at here. Multi megapixel camera and other amenities that are great for you. With its ability to scan your emails and always keep you up to date with whatever you've got going on, the Motorola Moto E is a great phone because it really keeps you on track in this busy world. So, there's a part here that I stumbled and I would love to remove it. There's a couple of ways to do it. One way that I usually don't use because I, I don't really find that it does what I want. But on the third clip at the end, if you select the third clip, there's a, there's a button that says Trim Tool. I usually don't use this one. I don't fully, I don't quite like how it works exactly. I'm going to do it, I'm going to show you the way I do it, which might be more trouble than it's worth for you, but I find that it really, I like the way this one works. So we've got trim tool, which would, in theory, cut out parts of the video. But here's how I would do it. Let me tell you the concept and then we'll do it. There's a part where I'm speaking, then I make a mistake, then I speak again. So here's a part where I'm speaking. In this busy world. So at about approximately here, uh, in my case is about 46 seconds or so, then I stumble a little. So so, this so then I start again around here. I can see that visually. I'm speaking here, make a mistake, 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 and then speak again. I want to cut out everything between a certain part. And on iMovie, I really like that, how you can click and drag a section and just press delete. You can't do that here on Movie Maker. Trim tool is supposed to help you do that, but here's the way I do it. We have this option called split. This will split a clip keyboard shortcut M, I guess, to make a split. What this does is, if I've got this amount of movie, I can cut it here and cut it here. So then I've got a part in the middle that I can delete. It's a little bit more extra, but then now I've got this part that seamlessly goes to this part, omitting the central part. So I have to do a couple of clips, like literally, there's some film, I snip it here, snip it here, and delete the part in the middle. That's the way I like to do it. Let me show you, then we'll do it together, because it's not hard, but it's good for you to see it. At approximately here, let's see my mouth, at approximately here, split. So now this clip ends right there. And then this new clip begins here. But then I'm going to go to approximately here and also split that. So now I've got the starting part of the clip that is okay, the middle part, which is bad, and then another ending part, which is good. This part between those two, and this is very easy to keep track of what am I working with. Notice the thumbnail did change to reflect a different clip. But here's the clip that I don't want anymore. I press delete. So now I've got this clip going into this clip. Play it again. In this busy world. So this has been Victor. So it jumps from one to the other. You might say, well, is there any better way to fade it and such? Yes, of course, but we'll get to that. Let me back up then so we can do this together. Um, look for in your video, my video on the third clip. In my case, it's somewhere around 46 seconds, but obviously don't count on just those numbers. That's why you might want the volume. Near the very end, you're going to see the sound, and then there's going to be a part where I'm speaking, say something, silence, and then I speak again. So between 
this set of mountains and then this one somewhere here. Be, it's your best judgment based on what my face looks like. Maybe don't cut it as soon as my mouth is open. Maybe cut it when my <laughs> mouth is closed. A busy world. Right there, perhaps. Somewhere there, perhaps. You can do right click, split, or memorize M. Make a split. That's how I remember it. Just press regular old M, not control M or anything like that, just M or right click split. So now what happened is this clip ends right there. Remember, wherever you see those sprocket holes, that clip ended. Then the new clip begins with a new thumbnail. Thumbnails get, I mean, these video clips get the first frame as its thumbnail, so you can kind of quickly see what kind of clip am I looking at. There's all of this part here where I'm making a mistake, and then I begin to speak over here somewhere. So this is big. somewhere around here. I could then make another split here. There's a couple of ways. So one way, make the split M. So now I've got this starting clip, this ending clip, and in the middle, junk. So I just select it, and on the keyboard, delete or right click, remove. And now I've got from here in this busy world. So this to here, as I did it again, I kind of figured out a little bit better way to clip it. And now it's not so abrupt, perhaps. Obviously, as you practice, it might be very obvious. You went from one clip to another. This takes practice. In this busy world. So this has been in this busy world. track in this busy world. So this has been Victor Campos with another On the Road review. Check out another one next time. And so this is part of that practice. The more you do this, the more this will make sense. And when you don't have very high stakes, like I'm giving you these clips, this is not real, but if you were obviously doing it for your real company, a real client, the stakes are higher. I got to do a good job. If you're a beginner, it's going to be very hard to do a good job in the beginning. So uh, you're going to practice this. And the way that I showed you here is the way I like to do it. It might be too many steps. You could play with that trim tool, which in theory you're supposed to say, okay, from here to here I'm going to cut it. I don't know why I don't trust this thing, so I don't use it. And on the Mac, it's really easy. Just select a section, delete. But here we have to do this extra thing. And another similar thing that I could do is I kind of did it even the, the longer way because we don't always have this luxury. Technically, I've cut the clip here, and now I need to start the clip again here. Don't I have set start point? Technically, I don't need to clip it again here to then delete this remnant. I can cut all of this out at the same time by doing set start point. You don't always have that luxury, though, especially as different clips are lined up in certain ways. Setting your start point might actually not give you the result you're thinking if you've got clips in between. Um, so most of the time what I'm doing is the way that I'm showing you that I add, I did a mark right there, and then I deleted the part I don't want, which is that one selected. In this busy world. So and that changed there. Sometimes it helps to smooth things out with a transition, a really short transition. in this busy world. So this has been... But there I think it's, it, look, it makes it look more obvious, that transition. You see that kind of like little weird ghost effect. In this busy world. So this is... So in my case, I don't think I need any transition. In this busy world. So this has been Victor... And you're going to see your mistakes much more clearly than anyone else. You're listening to this, you're watching it over and over and over to get it perfect. You're going to know where you clipped it. You're going to know where you made changes. You're going to be your worst critic. When other people see it, that's a great video. They won't know when you did that little cut. They won't notice it. But you're living with it so deeply that you're going to notice these things. And again, work on it. Take some time off. Do something else. Come back. Work on it again. You might have forgotten, you might have forgotten that little jump there. You might not, might not be anything to worry about. Track in this busy world. So this has been Victor Campos with another On the Road review. 
Check out another one next time. At the end of my video, credits. Completely optional, of course, but here's a spot again. If a person made it to the end of your video, do a little marketing to them. Website, email address, you know, mention this video and get 10% off. You know, you've got a spot at the end if they make it that far. Unfortunately, though, based on the YouTube statistics, people don't go beginning to end on any video. Um, they jump around sometimes, or they just watch a little bit of it and they're done and move on. So if you get someone dedicated enough to watch your video entirely, who has 54 seconds to spare anymore? But if they go all the way to the end of the video, you can have something at the end for them, such as credits. So I can say, again, uh, Motorola Moto E Review. by Victor Campos. And this is like the credits at the end of the movie, those credits that scroll up. So what you want to do is press enter a couple of times and keep adding text, and this text that you add will automatically scroll by. Let me just show you. I'm just going to add a bunch of text here. Yeah, I'm going off the edge. But then when I actually play it, it looks like that. whatever you want to put at the end So here I'm saying use coupon code viral01 for 10% off, 10% of video, 10% off a video of your own. So I'm putting in a little bit there of enticement. I might tweet, hey everyone, check out our new video. Watch till the end for exclusive content. Yes, someone could jump to the end. But perhaps if they, if you're creating something interesting or useful enough, they do watch it, they go to the end, there's this advertisement for them. go. So I have a complete video. It's in mine ended up being one minute, one second long, 31 seconds. If yours is different than mine, again, that's fine. Doesn't matter. What's that? Yeah, and that's, that's, there's a Star Wars effect in there as well, yeah. Really capitalize on the on the time. Sometimes uh, you have a video that's really nice, you want to see it more completely because we've been working in this the whole time as clips and then this preview on the left. Let's check this out. If you, if you move your video back to the beginning, your, your playhead back to the beginning, and then you select that option right there, preview full screen or F11, it will show your video full screen as a complete project in a slightly lower quality though but if you click on that that's how it might look like for someone that's watching the whole thing completely hello everyone this is Victor Campos with a new on the road review we're gonna head on out and before that we're gonna take a look at the brand new Motorola Moto E it's a great phone for those of us that are on the go so let's take a look at it. see you leaving a prompter
This device has a variety of features such as a 5-inch screen, 20 megapixel camera, and other amenities that are great for You can then... Uh, with its ability to scan your emails okay, to fix that. keep you up to... Need to fix that audio. If you go in the full screen like this, you can press escape on the keyboard. It, with whatever you've got going on, the more... So that full screen view there takes you come in full screen, you can press escape. Hearing it again, okay, the volume on this is a little too loud compared to the other. So again, I can go into these clips, but be careful here because now I've got um, two clips to deal with. I, I did that split, and then so that one's going to be loud and that one's going to be loud. So I have to hear them both. And other amenities that are great for you. With its ability... And other amenities that are great for you. With its ability to scan your emails and all. And approximately there, and then I have to remember this. In this busy world. So this has been Victor Campos. See that? Remember, if you split your clips, they don't all inherit the same volume. In track in this busy world. So this has been Victor Campos. Okay, that's good. So. We've got all of these clips. We've got these three clips we put together. We've put some text, credits and such. Great. I'm almost done because I'll show you lastly here. Audio. I want to add some sound behind it. It's called a music bed. Everything lays on top of it. Your video lays on top of this music bed. It's just music happening in the background. I could have music playing throughout the whole clip in the background. Then I have to be careful about my audio on top of the background audio, or I can have music only at the beginning, only at the end. And so let's try this. As I said, you should have copied my sound file from the network folder. Inside of the Movie Maker here, if you go back to the Home tab, we have a section Clipboard, Add. Here's where you can add video. Here's where you can add music, or a webcam, or narration. So actually, you can have audio playing in the background, let's say we make a slideshow. If you do add photo and I add a bunch of photos and transitions and effects, I can create an interesting slideshow, add music to that, and narration. That's a different kind of video. But here we've got add music and notice you've got the actual icon itself and you've got add music little button here. Some of these buttons have a little triangle with more options. So there's more options triangle under add music. Click that not the music note, but the add music. Because what you get here is at the bottom, add music, add music at the current point. If I select add music, it'll start music from the beginning of my video. But if I put my playhead on a certain part of the video and I want music at that point, it's the second option. Then the question always comes up, okay, you're going to give us a video, uh, you're going to give us a sound file. But what about myself? How do I get music onto my movie? And when you take most of my classes, I always tell you in there, don't do a Google search for a picture and rip it off and use it. You want to create your own pictures, or you want to get stock photos, royalty-free photos, free photos. Same thing with audio. Don't open up your iTunes and pull in the latest Adele song and put it on your video. YouTube's going to take it down. YouTube's computers are running 24 hours a day, and they can match content. If you've got pieces of someone else's music, YouTube will find it, like in minutes. I've uploaded music, I've uploaded videos using copyrighted music, and right away it tells me this is copyrighted, because it's always scanning. So what you're going to do, you're not going to use any famous piece of music. You would love to use Freebird in that, in that video, but you're not going to. You're not going to use any copyrighted music. Write that down. You're not going to use copyrighted music. You're going to use trademark free music, copyright free music, public domain music. You can use free music. Movie Maker here has a link to the Free Music Archives. Freemusicarchive.org. It's a website full of free music that you can use for your projects. Perhaps you're not going to find the music of famous artists, but you're going to find a song that fits the mood and the style of your video, and you can use it without a problem. I'm not sure what Audio Micro is, I don't use it, and Vimeo, you could find free music there too, but you've got directly free music archive.
question. Yeah, freemusicarchive.org. Let me pull it up here, but it's right on the it's right on the menu bar. Question here. Freemusicarchive.org. You can go to FMA and then uh, so everyone's in like donation mode because it's the end of the year. Uh, but um, here, then you can go in and hear some sound clips. It's, it's that, that time, time of the year. year. Yeah. And, and so forth. So you can browse different genre names. These are full sounds. They're not just little clips. They're the full music that people out there cop that put them. People put out their copyright free, royalty free, basically safe for you to use in your projects, the Free Music Archive. YouTube itself has a screen that when we log into YouTube, YouTube itself has a screen full of thousands of songs for you to use. Um, the sound that I just gave you, I got off of YouTube. You'll see where. It's in their creator studio once we log in and all of that. But the sound that I gave you, I'm going to play it briefly before we add it to our project. Let me play it briefly. So a professional sounding song, 2 minutes 43 seconds. Uh, I got that right off of YouTube. No, I didn't do a YouTube search. I logged into my YouTube account. I went to the Creator Studio, and it was there. We'll see where that is in a moment. But YouTube gives you music that it's okay to use. And actually, technically, there is a spot there where it'll show you, yes, you can use that Adele song, but not the famous Adele song, maybe this other Adele song. We will see in the studio when we log in. But I got this one for us because it's got this style That'll work, I suppose. We can search. We can search the YouTube archive based on mood, based on length, based on instruments, etc., to get the right sound for your video. Because I think my video is good, but with this little bit of extra music, I think it's going to put it over the top and be really nice. Yes. Besides using the music that they're offering for free, if you were to create a video and then want to post it somewhere else, would that be legal, or is it only for using Yes, it is. Uh, it, they are royalty free and okay to use, basically anywhere. So, uh, when I need to do any video projects, not necessarily for YouTube, I do go there to get the a sound. So let's see how we can add the sound to our project. Um, again, here's another artistic choice. Do I want the sound to start at the very beginning of my video, or perhaps when I come on screen, or at a certain part of the screen, or or what? It's up to you. But I'm going to say, yeah, let's start our sound at the very beginning of our project. So if you click at the beginning, <clears throat> and then within the Home tab, Add Music, Add Music, at the beginning of, this, of the video, basically. So click Add Music. Inside of my Project folder on the desktop, Video Examples, you should see a sound there, Weekend in the City, I suppose by the artist's silent partner. It's part of the whole YouTube audio library. This will take most popular sound formats. The thing about people then ask me, well, what about uh, what about classical music? The reason you don't want to use famous music is because there's a copyright, and uh, and there's not much time to talk about copyrights. But basically, a person or a company owns the right to copy the music, to use the music. So, you know, Adele owns her music. And you can listen to it, but you can't use it for commercial purposes. Classical music. Well, this is music that was, you know, 100 years old, 200, 400 years old. Why can't I use it? Beethoven's been dead for a little while. Well, technically, you can. The music, classical music, the older it is, the better. You can use it. But here's the problem. The most recent recording by the London Philharmonic? The London Philharmonic owns that recording. The music itself, the sheet music, the world owns that. But the recording of that piece, that piece of, uh, of music created recently, the creators own that. 
So that's the thing about just because you've got a music full of classic, you've got a CD full of classical music, doesn't mean you can use it in your clips, as in your video, especially if it was recorded recently. So again, free music archive, or we'll go to the video, the YouTube audio library soon. Select your clip, open it, and you get a new track. You get this green track for audio, purple track or, or pink track for text, and you can do one more kind of track, the webcam or the narration. But then this shows, there's the sound playing. Click play. Problem? can't hear myself. So I have several things I can do here. One way that often fix it, fixes it pretty well is after you've added your sound, go to project, emphasize video. I want the audio in my video to be emphasized over my music. It was set to narration. I have no narration. Narration is when you go to this button and add narration. We're not going to get to that. We've got audio in our video. Now emphasize that. Let's see how it sounds. Perhaps a little better. Another another thing to do um, as you select different tracks. Remember, you get different tabs. You select your audio tab. I mean your audio track, and then select your music tools option. Look at that, a volume for audio. I can pull that down. I'll probably have to pull it down pretty far because that's a pretty loud sound. Let's see how that sounds. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos with the new On The Road Review. We're going to head on out. For that, I'm going to take a look at Red Eye Motorola Moto E. It's a great phone for those of us that are on the road. So let's take a look at it. This is a very fast So I'm on the right track. I'll probably decrease it even more. Will we have to be in video or, to, or music tool? This one's going to be music tool. And, and that's a good point. Because video has an, a volume and audio has a volume, so be careful. Make sure you're in the Music Tools option, and then you can decrease that volume. And this has got its own fade in, fade out. I think that strike at the beginning is a little too loud. I can fade that in. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos with a new On The Road review. So the advice that I can give you that I think it's useful to set in your project emphasize video because it will be smart enough to decrease the volume also then you have to manually as well decrease the volume you've got the option also to do a little fade in and such I'm gonna do let's see a medium fade in of the sound it'll be low and it'll fade in higher So this is another thing to obsess about. How good is the volume? How loud is the volume? One way to really understand that is what I usually do is I play a different sound first. I go to my iTunes, I play a sound, because it's all alphabetical, usually I go directly to back um, to... what's the song called again? Uh, not Back in Black. Um, the Amy Winehouse one. Um, something black. Uh, but it's all alphabetical. So I usually go to a certain sound, I play that one, I adjust my speakers or headphones, then I come in here and do my audio editing. Because I could be doing my audio editing here, it sounds great, then I play any other clip and my volume is really high. So I didn't have that starting point of a different sound file with this one. And then jump around to other parts of the video. This is a device that has a variety of features 
necessary. With its ability to scan your emails and always keep you up to date with whatever you've got going on, the Motorola. So all this video you took was with this the camera here, or no, with my phone, with this phone here. I was recording myself here and doing the stuff here. But like here, you have the phone in your hand. I have more than one. With its ability to scan your emails and always keep you up to date. Got another one next time. The way you slow your text down. Let me let me get to that one moment. Uh, I'm showing here that my video is playing, and and look at this detail here. The um, the video ends, but the music ends abruptly. Abruptly. Well, you can select your audio track, music tools, fade out. It's too slow. There you go. Fade out, or slow or fast or whatever. Fast will sound like this. So it might work. Again, this is all up to you. Again, I can show you the tools. It's up to you to decide what's right. I'll do slow there. Um, the thing is then uh, the text. The text is happening really fast at the end and that's a function of how long is this black box visible. This black box on video tools is set to, in my case, 6.7 seconds. So there's 6.7 seconds to display all of that text. If I want that text here to scroll slower, I have to increase the duration of my video. So if I put that to 20 seconds, then the text at the end will be much more leisurely. Well, be careful. You got video tool and you got text tool. Make sure your video tool is the one that you're increasing duration. And like for instance, like to hurry everything to fast forward. Oh yes, the fast forward part. The fast forward is You select a clip, and then you go to the video tool. Speed. The speed of the video is one times. You can make it double speed. You can make it slower. So let's say I'll put it on double speed. So it goes from this clip. It is a busy world. <laughs> to that speed. You can take off the, the sound, no? From that. You can. You, you've got a video clip that moves fast but sounds too fast. You can always go in and go to the volume and turn the volume off that of that clip. Yeah. And then the opposite is that I can slow it down. Opposite way. Let's say I, it's a quarter speed. Or, like, for instance, if I'm doing recipes, I just choose not to speak. So this way, yeah. fast forwards. Yeah. yeah. In this busy world. world. <laughs> That's my uh, witness relocation plan video. So that's how you can change the speed of a video. You just go over to the video tab, edit speed. So here I think it's all really coming together. I've got text, I've got video, I've got sound in the background, I've got transitions, animations. This, uh, this comes with practice, of course. I make it look so easy, but it takes literally years of practice. Um, but you can probably get up to speed pretty quickly the more you do it. I'm going to run 
through one more. F and I look at it a few more places again. Because it really keeps you on track in this busy world. So this has been Victor Campos with another On the Road review. Check out another one next time. Hmm. Um, just to be stationary or for text to move? The final scene or clip. That's one of the things, though, that is not that obvious to do. What I could do is, um, you, let's see, can I add another credit? Let's say at the very end, I'm going to add another credit. OK, it looks like I can add two credits. The point of adding two credits is then I can choose the simple, the simple animation, the very first one, which is no movement. So I added another credits, and then at the very end, I've got the moving credits station. So just add another, add another credit sequence at the end, but then select the very first type of animation. That one doesn't move. When you do the text, uh, is that where you write down, the, like for instance, your, your, your email or your Facebook page or your website page? Sure. Oh. You can write it at the end. And like I said, sometimes people don't stick around to the end. So perhaps as the video is going on, you can add a caption and at that moment add your email. And if they click on it, it won't go to there? No, that's a little bit different. When we get into YouTube in a moment, you add that in YouTube. You make active clickable links in YouTube. Okay, let me move on here. I've got this video that I've been making. Remember to save it. Uh, it's this is our work in progress. The test things at one thirty. No, I won't. The, um, this is our work in progress, and so now I need to make it the final file, the file that actually I can upload to YouTube or Vimeo or my website or whatever. Let's go back to the Home tab. We need to process this into one final file because there's a bunch of clips and tracks and things. I need to make it one file. So if you go back to the Home tab, at the very end, you have sign in, ignore that, but then you've got save movie. If you click the save movie options, you've got recommended for this project, which I usually use, but then you've also got burn it onto a DVD, prepare it for mail, save it in the format for an iPhone, an Android, Windows Phone, Android tablet, save it directly to Vimeo, MySpace, give me the audio only, custom settings. Lots of settings here. The one that you that I would recommend is the first one recommended for this project. And actually, if you just click the icon, it'll take you to recommended for this project. If you need other types of settings, you can go down there. But usually you're going to be working on simply clicking the icon. And here it says, OK, where would you like to save this? I'm going to save it into my folder on the desktop. It's going to now get saved as the name of your project .mp4. mp4 is the modern video format. mp3 is audio and mp4 is video. And most of the time you're going to deal with this kind of video. You're going to see .mov, .avi, .mpg, other formats. But this seems to be like the really big one nowadays. 
we can choose other options down here not too many to choose from really but mp4 you're not gonna have much problems here's the name of my project my video mp4 it's in my folder I'll click save and part of the reason that video creation video production takes a while is because then you have this final step it's going to assemble every clip and every sound and all of your settings and depending on the length and complexity and the power of your computer this might take a moment or it might take many moments um, so mine is relatively fast it's only one minute long but if I was working in videos that were longer this would take a while no joke I've made a video that is three hours long I put together various video clips of about 20 minutes, and it ended up to about three hours. And I think that took like an hour to process it all together. I put it down, went to go get something to eat, came back, it was still going on. So this final movie creation is often a step that takes a while. It'll ding when it's done, and then you can play your masterpiece. You can open the folder or just close this window. Let me play it one more time. Question? Is there a way to get, uh, this is just copying really quick out, the v VHS videos into a DVD? Yeah, you need to buy extra hardware. They sell them at Fry's or Best Buy. This little box that you plug in your VHS into the box, and then that box plugs into USB on your computer. All right, so I'm going to move on from this point, but any quick questions? This is our fast, fast uh, crash course with Windows Movie Maker. Yes. I'm going to need to move on from that. Um, we'll go during the lab time on that. I have so, a quick question. Yes. Um, in the very beginning, you colored your text. How did you do that? Whenever you select your text, you can then uh, you know double click on your text. It'll pop up. And then to color your text, it's going to be the option right here under font. Mine's white text. I can go with different colors. Or background color up here. But you have to make sure you've double clicked your layer of the text. Okay, so we've got a video clip. I'm going to close Movie Maker. You can keep it open if you'd like, but I'm done with Movie Maker for the moment. I've saved everything. Done with Movie Maker. Let's talk a little bit then about, I've got this video clip ready to share right here. Out of all of these pieces, I made this one video. And since this is a YouTube class, we'll talk about YouTube, and since we're getting close to the end of the day, um, if you've already got a Google Plus account or a Gmail account, you're this close to getting a YouTube account. Because YouTube is part of the whole Google family of products. Google Search, Gmail, Google Maps, YouTube. Google owns YouTube. And so if you've got a Gmail account, we can create a YouTube account pretty, pretty easily. Go ahead and open your web browser. Go to youtube.com. And on the top right corner, click Sign In. Can you use a Gmail account, is it? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a Gmail account, then you'll need to create an account. I've got one, so I'm going to log in. Again, if yours is a little different than mine, we will... We'll check it during the break, but log in with your Gmail account.
And because I've done this before, perhaps I might not be able to uh, show you every exact screen. Um, but if everyone logged in, let me look at someone's computer. How does it look for you? Oops. Was anyone able to log in? So you get uh, the way YouTube works is basically you are either a consumer or a creator. I can go to YouTube and consume. I can look at these videos. I can look at these endless top ten lists and such. I can. Um, go on the top and search how to fix a doorbell and I'll find things as a consumer but we're creators and so we've got a video to share you've logged in and my icon is here because I've already set this up but you probably just have a little generic person icon if you click your icon on the top right you have creator studio you don't have this until you create an account what's that? No, so, yeah. so under Creator Studio, go ahead and click that. It might tell you, you must create a channel to upload videos. Fine, go ahead and create channel. Use YouTube as, it'll ask you for a name, and so then you can create a channel or use a business or other name. You can use personal accounts, business accounts. I'm going to use as a, a business. So then what's your channel name? What's your category types of videos? Or your type of company? Are you a company? Are you about arts or other? Agree to the terms. I'm going to stop at this point because I don't want to create an account on this account. I need to reuse it for further for future classes. But for yourself, you do want to go through that process, and then I'll show you what to do after that. So go ahead and create your account. Let me log in through this other account, and then I can show you what to do after that. Okay, again, because I'm using an account that already exists, you might not see the same sort of thing. Uh, let me see what yours might look like. It's going to ask you to create a business company or a business name. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I <clears throat> so, your screen might look a little bit more, yeah, it's going to look different because of the, because I've already got videos here, but on the left side you have these buttons, dashboard, video manager, etc. All of these different settings. Under this video screen, you don't have any videos. I've got a few videos on this channel here. So your account here is a channel. You're a YouTube channel. You can upload videos. 
and um, share them and, and all of that. And actually, you can make money from your YouTube videos. So just to pull the curtain back a little bit, look at this. I've made a cool 16 cents from YouTube for my videos on that particular channel. You can have multiple channels, multiple revenue from it. But the point is that you might not have any videos. We've got simply on the top right, upload. You might, it might be telling you in the middle of the screen. But click that upload button on the top right. We have the ability to upload a video and to make it public or private. So don't worry if you're uploading this video that is not a real video, that you're not proud of it or whatever. We can delete it, of course, but we'll set it to private so that no one will see it. And on the top right corner, click Upload. And then before we do anything, would you like it public, unlisted, private, or scheduled? Public is that anyone on YouTube could find it. It's public. I search a keyword, I can find it. If I share the link to the video, people can see it. So it's totally public. Unlisted is that it'll be on YouTube, but if someone tries to do a search in YouTube or Google to find it, they won't find it. If, however, they have the link, the direct link to the video, then they can see it. So you can upload an unlisted video. No one will find it unless they have the link. Private, no one can see it at all except yourself. And if you do select private, you can let other people see it if you add their name or their email. Okay, unlisted people, that uh, name mm -hmm. is the only one can see it, right? Yes. And scheduled, this is new. Scheduled is a way that, okay, I've got five clips I'm going to upload. I spent all weekend working on these. But I'm not going to upload all five of them this week or this month. Maybe I'm going to upload one video per month, one video per week or something. So I can schedule videos to be automatically published to be public at a certain time, selecting schedule on the next screen. I'm going to recommend for the moment set this to private. No one will be able to see this because then there is also the art and the science of SEO. I'm uploading this amazing video. If I don't have any subscribers, no one's going to see it. If I don't optimize it with keywords, no one's going to find it. So I usually myself upload to private, where then I can at my leisure craft a good SEO strategy, search engine optimization, because there's a search engine built into YouTube, and then I can make it public. So I'm going to select private, and you can either drag the video clip onto the arrow or click on the arrow. Find your video. Pictures Tech Review, Moto E.mp4. Open that. And then here's another part where this takes a while. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, this might go up quickly or not. We've got relatively fast computers. It uploaded it. You see that little bar was increasing. Then it has to process it. But if you've got the usual type of um, internet provider at home, they might give you pretty good download speeds, but they're all really bad about upload speeds. They don't take in, into account at all really upload speeds because they're so afraid people are going to pirate stuff. If you've got your whole music collection, you want to upload it to the cloud to let people take it. Most of the companies, Cox, AT&T, Time Warner, they give you pretty bad comparatively upload speeds. Download, you might have 20 megabyte download, 50 megabyte download. But uh, even with a 50 megabyte download, we might give you 5 megabyte upload. Um, so my parents, they've got the 50 megabyte download. I don't know why, but they've got the 50 megabyte download and 5 megabyte upload. At home, I've got Cox, but I went for the cheaper one. I've got uh, 20 megabyte download, but then I get 2 megabyte upload. So this was only about a 30 megabyte video. It shows right here. 30, 35 megabytes. Not too big. When you're dealing with a 5-minute video, 10-minute video, 60-minute video, these are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to take longer to upload. This was relatively small. We've got relatively fast computers. It's going along well. You're going to probably be disappointed at home. You're not going to have the high-tech 
internet backbone that we have here and you're gonna be waiting and waiting and waiting for an upload that's fine let it upload go take a break and come back there's two parts here you're uploading and then it's processing it mine already says upload complete your video will be available here here's the direct video here's the direct link to my video but they still won't be able to see it because I said it's a private this is the thumbnail that appears for my video and then I've got this description that's what I wrote in my file name I mean the title and then a description in my case a keyword because I do that and then thumbnails do I want to use this thumbnail which is a picture near the beginning of my video do I want to use this thumbnail a picture near the end of my video do I want to use this picture which is near the middle of my video that one might be okay so I'll go with that one or if I know Photoshop I can design my own custom thumbnail and upload it. And that's what the pros do. They don't take a clip from their video, which, will, which is always going to be awkward. It never lands on the right screen. I go into Photoshop, I make a graphic, and I upload it, and I get a very well-crafted thumbnail. This screen allows you to set the privacy. Do I actually want it private, unlisted, or public, or schedule it? You can send it directly to people. You can put it in a playlist, which is just folders, basically, to organize your videos. In this tech review blog, fake blog that I have, I might be uploading videos regarding phones and tablets and laptops. Well, I can make a playlist all about the laptop videos, all about the tablet videos. But I think the biggest and most important thing to do on this screen is set a title, that is truthful and meaningful for your video with keywords in mind. This is a review, Moto E. There's a description where I can write as much as I want, actually. Fill it with keywords and sentences, but truthful ones, accurate ones. Victor Campos reviews the Motorola Moto E. The $149 device that meets all your needs. Perfect for the student on the go, blah 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 blah, as much as I want to write keywords, what's this video about, who's my target audience. Think of in terms about who might find that video, what would they be searching for? Review of Moto E. Like for instance, if you're doing a recipe and you want to write down the recipe, uh, like the white bean or something, can you write it there too? Or? There's two ways. You can put the actual d ingredients and, st and steps right in the description, or you can put a link, which is that you're going to need the link over here, and that will become an active link once we publish it. That, needs, that means you need a website first where your instructions are at. So it might be a good idea just to add it in, add it within here. And then you've also got tags. These are the more literal keywords. This is pretty cool because it's going to give you suggestions as you write stuff. Let's say here. Motorola. Well, actually, we'll do it this way. Uh, the tags editor here is different than the one of another screen, which I like better. So I'll skip tags for the moment. There's other things you can look at on your own, such as translations in different languages. Monetization. This is how you make money off of your YouTube videos. It takes more steps than simply turning on this option here. You don't have time for it, but if you do want to make video, uh, make money off of your videos, there's a little process that you go through. Monetization. It will ask you to put in a bank account and such because when you when you earn your money, you're going to get you're going to get money transferred to your bank account. How are you going to make the money on that view? Yes. People watch your video, mm -hmm. and then they will put ads on your video. And then if someone clicks on those ads, you earn money. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But 
you have to have all the business account in order to do it, not just the private. Even the private one lets you. Wow, how are you going to set it up? I don't have time to tell you. Really? <laughs> but wow. you can go in there. That's, you can go in there. There's going to be a button that tells you set up monetization and all of the steps. Okay. Yes. So go into monitor that. Mm -hmm. so when, when do you get this class again? It's be the same one day or two days? It's going to be two days. But you have to use it in your own video, right? You're not using yeah, somebody else's video. Exactly. You can't use other people's videos and other people's music. That's why I'm saying you want to you make your own videos. You can your own, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to create you know, just some own music, mm -hmm. or else it's going to terminate it. Exactly. Wow. Worst case scenario is it will terminate it or delete it. Best case scenario is it'll leave it, but you won't be able to earn money from it. Oh, wow. So you have to come up with a really creative idea. Oh, that's nice. Yes. I didn't know. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that you can make money off of YouTube, yeah. and, and it's actually almost annoying because there's some people that literally make millions of dollars yeah. from YouTube. Uploading the, the crazy viral videos and all of that stuff and getting a, an audience that really cares and all of that, and people can make literally millions of dollars from their YouTube videos. How much videos. they make each video? I mean, it depends. But they have to click into the ads, not the video, yeah. but the ads that come out around them. Yes. And it depends on the video. Uh, everyone ranges a little bit. As I saw, as I showed a moment ago, I've made 16 cents so far. Wow. On this account. On another account, I've made a little more. But, um, Probably each video costs probably a penny or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Wow. Kind of low. There's this advanced screen that you can look at on your own, but what I would recommend, go to advanced okay. and turn on... If you're going to let people comment on your video, turn on show approved. Because at the moment, your setting probably says all. Oh, let any crazy person write any crazy thing on your video. You can say, okay, no comments. Turn it off. But if you do want people to comment and good comments, put it on approved and you will get a notification that says there's a new comment. You can then read it and say approve it or delete it. So only the good comments will show up. And that's okay to do because we don't need any more negativity. And a bunch of other options you can look at on your own, but that's the big one I would tell you. So, do approve comments. I'm going to click done at the top right. I'm going to click my icon again at the top, more top right, and click creator studio. Um, I saved my settings of my video, I then clicked on my icon and I went back to the main creator studio. And then um, you might now see on videos here, we're on dashboard, you've got one video. Uh, let's open the video manager, and it goes to your videos, and there's my latest video. The point of this is, I was saying about these, these tags, these keywords. Very important to get found, but from this screen is the one I like to add my tags because it helps you. The other screen it doesn't. So let me show you here. We're in your video manager. Here's this latest video. Click edit. It takes you back to a screen that looks a lot like what it used to look like uh, a moment ago. Same sort of thing here, but here's the big difference now. Under tags, now as I start to write, review. Do you guys get a pop-up that tells you suggestions? Oh, mine is not doing it, but what's supposed to happen is as you start writing keywords here, it will pop up to give you suggestions, or it should. Is that happening with anyone? I don't know if they changed it, but <clears throat> here I would put in the keywords. This is a review. Motorola. Moto. Um, 
what else? Um, testimonial. I can put as many as I want, basically. And these are the keywords that people might be typing in on YouTube to get found. You know, just to make this up. Tutorial. How to. Examples. Maybe it's at my store. So, San Diego. When it's more than one word, you want to put it in quotes. Whenever there's single words, just spaces. But when it's multiple words, put them in quotes. Remember to save your changes. You know what? Sorry. They, they, might, they must have changed this because something's weird here. I typed in a few keywords and then when I saved it, they all became one keyword. That's odd. Here's, I think, what you need to do now. You need to type a keyword like review and then press tab. And then it should highlight like that's a keyword. This seems to be different. That's weird. Testimonial. Tab. That's a keyword. San Diego tab. That's a keyword. Because when I wrote Moto E space, I mean Moto Motorola Victor, and then I press tab, all three of those became one keyword. It's not supposed to happen. You write a keyword, you press tab, and then that becomes a keyword. Save it. This is still set to private, so if I wanted people to see it, I would put it under public or unlisted. Um, you want to save your changes. You go back to dashboard. And then there's a view channel. That's what the world will see. And that view channel, there's your address. So if you want to tweet that or send it on a um, newsletter. So if your, if your channel is viewed by somebody, very popular people, you could be making real food. Viewer. You could, yes. Yeah, using somebody else, right? <laughs> yeah, piggybacking on someone else. Someone else that's popular could make your channel popular. Wow. I see it now. <coughs> so on dashboard view channel, you get your address about your video, about your, your whole channel. And um, as I said, you can get music for free on YouTube. It's under the Creator Studio here and under the Create button. Create Audio Library. And here it is. Here's all of these music. All of these to work with. But what I recommend from this screen is there's a few of these that have a little person and these ones are going to be more perhaps famous bands. The problem with using a sound that has this one is that you have to give attribution you have to give credit where you got the sound, who the sound is from. So instead of going with one of these, a faster way is, is ones without the little person. And so you see in order for you to filter this, you have genre, mood, instrument, duration, attribution. Select attribution not required. Not required. So when you set this, you won't have to give any credit. You won't have to say where you got it from. If you have it on the other one, you have to give a credit where you got it from or else the video could be taken down.
So you have this whole audio library of royalty free music, music that's okay for you to use, organized by all of these different methods. Find me music that is in the mood of happy. Find me music that is in a duration of only one minute, etc. But always I recommend use the attribution not required. So you just click download and then you put it into Movie Maker. And then you've got a new sound on your project. So I went into Mood Bright, and there it is, Weekend in the Sky. This line tells you how popular it is, how many other people are using it. So this one over here seems to be more people using it than this one over here, Ultimate. Well, I found it under Bright, Mood, Attribution Not Required, and it's one called Alternate from Vibe Tracks. Notice these say, you're free to use this song and monetize your videos. You can make money from your videos using these songs. Some of these other ones, especially the ones that say Attribution, it'll tell you how you can use them. Let's say this Wheels one. Let's say it's amazing. What it says here, you're free to use this song and monetize your video, but you must include the following in your video description. So you have to have this copied and pasted into your description. You can make money off of this one, but you have to make sure that's there. If you don't have that there, then they won't let you make money from it. Is it people watching a video that it matter how long they're watching or not? Mm -hmm. There's so many things that, that, that go into how you make money off of your videos. Uh, how long they watch the video, how many times they click, how popular you are, just so many things. Wow. So many things. Mm. So many things around that There's just no way. There is way, you just need time. It's just it's so many. I never have a time to do it. Huh? Little by little. No, I'm not going to be, you know. I don't people to be advertising my size. No way. No wonder people wanted to be my size. That's why, that's unfortunately... No, they want to make money from that. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the way people they make money online now. That's crazy. <laughs> well, you use them. Use them and you make money. <laughs> wow. So, as I said previously, if we had the time to do two days of this, we would spend much more time on the YouTube. But you can't do much on YouTube without a video. So we spend most of our time talking about video editing. There's still plenty that you could learn about video editing. I think they teach a bunch of video editing classes here. They might use other software also like Adobe Premiere or what are the other famous ones? Premiere... Are you teaching video class? Premiere... Um, after Effects and Final Cut. There's a bunch of other software out there. But I talked about Movie Maker and iMovie because they're free. That other software is going to be hundreds of dollars because it's big and professional. Here we can accomplish something pretty professional and I've shown you for real clients. Those videos that I showed you for that restaurant and other ones that I didn't get to, I did it all with this, you know, amateur stuff. What was the name of the videos that you showed us in the beginning? Well, it's in the, it's in the handout. Do you have any? The, yeah, it's, it's in the hand, that one is in the handout, yes. So why you just show in the first class? Do you have any recommendation for some kind of quick, you know, to read about it? Anything you can get some site or...? Let's talk during the, during the break. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up the class, and um, again, this is the tip of the iceberg. It's something new to learn, and hopefully you keep working at it. But thank you for taking the class, and hopefully see you in a future class.